What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to have a look at the first of its reveals from OP09. The OP09 reveal cycle has started. There are things that need to be talked about. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where I come in. I am extremely excited about OP09. OP09 is going to be a great set. So let's go and have a little bit of a look now, shall we? And we need to start off here with something which is going to be a very big deal. Shanks. We have seen the Shanks leader both... Now we've got, weirdly, we got a scan of the regular art. And then a nice little photo of the old art. But of course, we know we get photos of the old arts now because they want to show off the texture and the foiling, etc. I can't be mad at them. It's a beautiful card. But we've had the OP09 meta for a little while in Japan right now. We know what the deal is in terms of whether leaders are going to be good or not. Because we've got a lot of data from Japan. It's not perfect. I'm not pretending it is. But we have a lot of information. And what I can tell you right now is Shanks is good. Shanks is a very, very good leader. It is seeing a bunch of play, a bunch of success. It is awesome. Also worth noting out that in OP09, we are going back to proper manga heads. When I say proper manga heads here, I mean they've actually got older artwork on, as opposed to the fake manga heads like the Perona from OP06, which is the same kind of style, but not actually done by Oda. They've got new artists. Of course, we're currently enjoying OP08. And in OP08, we did have the fake manga heads like in OP06. Feels like I should have just used one of these as an example. But I didn't. I wanted to show Perona again. I still want that leader to be good. But you can see the Charlotte put in here as well. The, the fake manga heads. Same style, but new artists. We're going back to the proper manga heads of OP09 with Shanks. And Shanks is going to be a very big deal. Once per turn, when your opponent attacks, give one of your opponent's leader or character cards minus 1,000 power during this turn. And basically, you continually make your opponent need an extra counter plus 1,000 to actually go and do well, get attacks through, KO your characters, all of that good stuff. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a pretty big deal. We're talking about a good leader. We're talking about one that's seen a whole bunch of play and success over in Japan. It, it's difficult at the moment with the information we've got, but I think, I think we can actually say it's probably the best deck in the format right now. We're not talking about absolute full-on domination, but if you have a look at the flagships that are happening around Japan at the moment, it is not the only deck that's winning. There are a bunch of decks that's winning, let's be clear. But I think it's probably the best deck in Japan in the OP09 meta. That's frankly a very big deal. Get ready for this, Shanks. This Shanks is awesome. And almost like we're celebrating that, we got a bunch of other reveals here, which are, well, Red Hair Pirates. We've got an Uta who's not a Red Hair Pirate. She is film. However, she is your generic Red Hair Pirate searcher. One costs 2,000 power, counter plus 1,000, and obviously they are showing the alternate art at the same time. When we start getting the reveals in the West, we don't really tend to muck about waiting for the alternate arts. We get them all together. But on play, look at the top five cards of your deck. Find a red-haired pirate's card, add it to your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. And as a fun little side note, these generic searches usually say, find a this type of card other than this character. But of course, Uta's not actually a red-haired pirate, she's film. All the Uta cards are not red-haired pirates, so you don't need to say except for Uta, because even if it wasn't, you still can't search for it anyway. Never mind, eh? But this is a very cool card, and it's a generic searcher. It's not particularly exciting. It's not a card you look at and like, whoa, that's game-breaking or any of that. You look at it and you're like, oh, cool, yeah. Generic red-haired pirate searcher. But actually, you need to know this stuff, so yeah, there we go. Uta. But then we've got Shanks. We've got three different versions of this Shanks. We've got pictures, photographs of all of them. We have got the Shanks from OP09. The regular, the alternate art, and the manga. Remember that the whole point of OP09 is that it is four emperors. That is the hook of the set. It is a four emperors set. And that means that we actually have four manga rares coming around in the set. 
They are, of course, the four emperors. And when we say four emperors, we mean the current four emperors in the manga, not the original. But basically, this is one of the four manga rares. And we've got the alternate art. And we've got the regular. There is a lot to get rather excited about here. And this Shanks is a very, very, very nice card. 10 cost 12,000 power. So, admittedly, it's a little bit of a pain. Because it's a big old card. But, firstly, 12k, very nice. But it gives all of your opponent's characters minus 1,000 power. No mucking about here. It's not like the leader where it's one. No, no. All of your opponent's characters get minus 1,000 power. And it's got rush. So you got a 12k attacker as soon as it hits the board. For what it's worth, both the Uta and the Shanks generally do see play as four ofs in this Shanks deck. So we're not talking about fringe cards here. We're not talking about cards that see a little bit of play here and there. We're talking about cards which are essentially staples in this Shanks deck, which is arguably the best deck in the format. Yes, sometimes you'll see Shanks as a free, but it's generally played as a three or four of, I think more often as a four. It's a phenomenal card. Yes, it's expensive, but 12k plus rush alone is very, very good. But we've got the whole all of your opponent's characters get minus 1,000 power. You combine it with the leader that once per turn, when your opponent attacks, gives your opponent's leader or one of the characters minus 1,000 power. And basically, you're combining this and saying to your opponent, for the entire game, keep having more counter. Keep having more ways to boost up your power. And yeah, fine. Sometimes they will. But you're basically making your opponent have extra resources throughout the entire game here. And to put it bluntly, there just comes a point in the game where your opponent runs out of steam. Where your opponent is not actually able to do all of this. And that's awesome. And then when we get to that stage, your opponent just loses the game. They're not able to get enough counter. They're not able to boost up their power enough. And we get to a point where your opponent just... All of their attacks are not quite strong enough. And then you run away with the game. The other one that's gone and been revealed here is Ben Beckman. And also, if you read the manga of One Piece, you'll notice that they keep having these popularity polls for the early part of the game. Ben Beckman keeps coming high up in the early One Piece popularity polls. I don't know there's fewer characters back then, but still... I never thought Ben Beckman was that special. Except for that one scene really early on, which is harsh. Think the Mountain Bandit. And you're like, oh, okay. Maybe that's why Ben Beckman ends up so high. But either way, what we got here is 7 cost, 7,000 power, super rare, counter plus 1,000. And on play, trash one of your opponent's characters with a 6,000 power or less. But then, obviously, we're talking about Red here. Red's got a million different ways to lower the power of your opponent's characters. And that's kind of the point here. You lower their power down nicely. And then this isn't really a 6,000 power or less. It's, it's not quite anything, but it's a lot. There are a lot of characters you can go after here. You know, think about, we got we got a million staples out. I mean, like a Tama, for instance. It's got counter plus 2k, and on play, you give one of your opponent's characters minus 2,000 for the turn. I mean, a Tama's just a phenomenal card, right? It's one of the best cards we've had. It's been an absolute staple in red, well, since it came out. It came out in OP01, which was the first set. So we've got a million cards like that. So this Ben Beckman, like I say, ends up being a bit better. Officially, remember, OP09 is scheduled for release in December. And we don't have any better information than that. Because we don't get the official release date until a few weeks before it actually happens. So it is, of course, subject to change. But 13th of December. We're like 99% sure it's 13th of December. That's the date that has been given to and published by distributors. It is subject to change. It's not completely official until it appears on the website. But come on, ladies and gentlemen. You know the deal by now. It is time to start getting hyped about OP09. OP09 is going to be a very big set. It is going to be a special set. I still feel sorry for OP08. Because, of course, 
OP08 was a decent enough set, but it's just a standard set. It's not a particularly special set like that. Then we got PRB01, which is clearly a special set that everyone is incredibly hyped about. And then we got OP09, which is a very big set. And OP08 is just kind of sitting there being like, what about me? And the answer is, sorry, mate, you ain't that special. But we've had our first reveals from OP09. We got Shang Tzu as a pretty big deal. So now it's over to you guys. Tell me how hyped you are for OP09. Tell me how hyped you are for Shanks as a deck. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... Wassy plays.